Welcome to The Power to Create, a web series helping you refine your creative vision by looking at the fusion of technology and inspiration. This week I'll show you how we take the multi-camera footage from our earlier shoot and prepare it for edit. Hi, this is Rich Harrington for The Power to Create, brought to you by Drobo, small box, big storage. And today I'm excited to show you the multi-camera editing features inside Adobe Premiere Pro. In fact, we're taking a look at the next version of Adobe Premiere Pro, which makes multi-camera even easier because we can use the audio to sync up our results. Let's take a look at the process from the beginning. I've created a new project by launching Premiere Pro and just simply clicking New Project. I've already given it a name. One of the first things we need to do is bring in our assets. Now, you might be tempted to use file import or drag and drop if you come from another editing application, or maybe you're new to editing and it just seems like the logical thing to do. Well, in fact, you want to use the media browser, which is a dedicated area of the interface to make it easier to import your footage. Here's how it works. I'll go down to the project panel and click on the media browser tab, and that lets me see all of my assets. Now what I'm going to do is start to bring things in. So let's just press the tilde key to maximize it. And you see I have a file structure for my project. For example, I have a folder called Tyler Tolliver. And inside of that, I have folders for each major camera. So I'm going to bring all of those in to my project. As I click on a particular folder, you'll notice it shows me all of its contents. One of the coolest features is the ability to mouse over a clip and actually review it. And this makes it easy for you to skim or hover scrub and actually choose the clips you want. Now, I'm going to bring in all of my clips for now just to get the project organized, but I'll show you later how we can browse and further refine things. I'll just right click and choose import. And that brings the whole folder in. And we can do the same for the D600. And as we continue to go. And there's the D7000. Now, each of these contains a different angle, and this will be used to tell our story. Sometimes you'll encounter files that can't import. In this case, raw still photos aren't able to be imported, so I'll just click OK. I do have the GoPro here, and I have a lot of files that I want to import. Now, if I look at this, I could see that there's a lot of images, including some JPEGs on that. So I could choose to import selectively here. One thing I'll do is I'll filter the types of files, and I could just choose to see only my QuickTime movie files, making it a little bit easier to narrow things down. But I want to target a specific folder. So let's make a folder here called GoPro. And I'll Command or Control double click to step inside of it. Notice it stayed docked. Back over here in the media browser, I could select the clips I want, right click and choose Import, and when we take a look there, you'll see they were added to that folder. Let's make a folder called Music. And I'll Command or Control double click to open it. Go back to the media browser and locate my audio files. We'll see all supported file types and there they are, the two songs. Let's bring those in. And one more folder to go. Let's double click on the AF100 and you'll notice there's another nested folder and now we start to see a card structure that may not look familiar. Some professional video formats have a card structure that often contains additional folders. It's important that you copy all that stuff over because those cards are going to have extra information that may be needed by the clips. Maybe it describes the format or provides metadata that is needed in order to edit. I'll double click here on the private file and over here I see the directory view. It's switched from a file directory to an AVCHD, which matches the structure of the card. Let's go ahead and create a new folder here to target that, and we'll label that with the type of camera. It's the AF100, and Command double click to open that bin. Back in the media browser, I could select all those clips, right click, and import. Now, all those files have come in. You'll notice at the bottom down here that it indicates that some conforming is happening. Conforming is often done on highly compressed formats, such as DSLR video files. In fact, it's actually the audio file that may need to conform in order to get a good, constant, and synchronized playback. 
This is usually a very quick step and it doesn't actually transcode the media or convert it into another format. It's just making an audio preview file to use during the editing stage. At this point, it looks like all that conforming is done and I have all of my clips. What I want to start to do now is load them into a sequence. Let's switch back to a smaller project panel and I'll go to list view temporarily. You'll notice that it's easy to resize the position of panels and see more or less information. I'll start with the principal camera, which is the AF100. A double click to the bin allows me to open it and I'll switch to icon view for a moment. And what I'm looking for is the first take from the performance. Let's find one here. And there's my slate, and that's actually take two. And the more I think about it, the more I think I'll use take two as my first take because he needed a little chance to warm up and we were all better on the second time around. To make it easier, let's label that clip. And I'll apply a color code here. I'll maximize the window here, and you can see my labels. I've color coded that red to make it a bit easier to find, and we'll come back to that. Let's go to the other bins and find the similar clip from the same performance. As we drag through here, it may be easy or hard to actually see the slate. Here comes the slate. Let's listen to it. So that's take one. I'm going to assume that the very next clip is take two. So we'll just go ahead and change that label to rows so it's easier to find. And I'll keep going through my bins. Alabama, take three, marker. All right, that's take three. So the one before must be take two. And you'll notice that we actually call out the take, making it easier to find in case the slate didn't get seen by all the cameras. This is why you always do a call and try to do a visible slate. That's take two, so notice it's much easier to see there, so we can quickly spot that. I'll label it. And we got another folder. I can also zoom in here to make it a little bit easier. And that's why we have the zoom magnification. So sometimes you could pan around and take a closer look at the shot. There's take one, so the one right after it is logically take two. There we go, we got it. And let's just go down to the GoPro bin and do the last clip. And we'll label that as well. Now that we have all the clips located, we can merge them. Let's make the window a little bit bigger. You'll remember when we recorded in the field, we recorded with sync sound, meaning that we had the separate audio source from the cameras. This ensured we had the highest quality recording. Now in this case, the sync sound was actually pre-recorded and we were playing back to the performance. What I'm gonna first do here is take the individual camera takes and merge them with the sync sound clip. This will make those files all clean and a lot easier to edit the multi-camera final sequence. With the music bin here, I'm gonna select the clip and the targeted video file. With a simple right click, I could choose Merge Clips and I'll tell it to merge using the audio. Click OK. And I have my new clip. I'll double click that and play. Nice and clean, much cleaner than the GoPro is capable of recording on its own. I've got the audio file selected, and let's just finish that out. There we go. Merge clips. We'll name that AF100. And you notice I'm removing the audio off of the original clip only using the merged audio. Done. And as we finish this up, we'll then be able to merge them all together into the multi-camera source sequence. Okay, all the clips have been merged. I now select the video clips, and we're going to combine those for multi-camera editing. Be sure to come back for part two when we take a look at the rest of the multi-camera video editing process.